for real people right here in the Inland Empire. We are 1050 AM KCAA. Welcome back. This is live with Aaron and Tobin. And uh, one thing that we didn't say when we, we just jumped right in, you can in- listen to this station on Terrestrial Radio at KCAA AM 1050. You can listen to us uh, on, the, on the web or watch us on Ustream. And the best way to find out the, to how to find us is go to kcaaradio.com. Finally, you can listen to us on your smartphone. Go to kcaaexpress.com. And this is true for all KCAA radio uh, shows, including the morning show, Live with Aaron and Kelly, and everybody else. So so right back at it, Tobin. Now we're going to move to the state-level issues. And uh, there are a couple propositions on the ballot that we need to talk about. There's a lot of propositions we need to talk about. And, you know, before the break, we were talking about taxes. And we have a couple uh, tax measures that are on the ballot in November. And I think that uh, there's a lot of strong opinions on both sides on, on, on these. Um, and I think we should start with the governor's initiative, which is Proposition 30. Yeah. And before we even get started, I have to tell you, I'm so tired of California legislators coming to us and saying, we've got a temporary tax. If you don't give it to us, it's going to be Armageddon. And they just keep spending. And we give, we get, they get the tax increase because everybody gets scared. And, and so they, they tick up their spending to match the new tax increase. So nothing ever changes. And this time, I feel like he's got a gun to our children's head. Well, and it's not just the gun to our children's head, but it's it's a gun that, that even if the taxes go through, the gun's going to gonna shoot. It's going to go off because the taxes will not cover the hole, the, de- the, de- the debt that the state is in. So we will re- if, if we vote to raise taxes, you'll get the tax increase and more cuts are still coming. Well, and so here we have one of the, the issues, and I'm looking at the initiative from the uh, California State um, Secretary of State's office, and increase, it increases personal income tax on annual earnings over 250000 for seven years. And people say, yeah, let's tax the rich. The problem is, is that there are fewer and fewer rich people to tax because they have the means to get out. Yeah, well, and if, if you go down to the bottom of that, uh, that screen there, Aaron, there is a, a chart that shows what the tax rate is currently for the wealthy, uh, and I think it's 9.2 or 9.3. Go go further down. There's the last page down on there. Um, and uh, it will go up 1% for uh, one level, and then it goes up 2%, and then finally 3% on the wealthiest people. So it'll it be becomes pushing. the highest tax rate in the nation. Yes. So it's, it's uh, uh, pretty shocking. Um, and again, it doesn't solve the problem. And what we're seeing happen in California is the wealthy people are moving out. Yes. Um, that they, they have options. If you're, if you're rich and you don't want to pay those taxes, you can move somewhere else. And that's yes. what they're doing. Well, and I, and I have to tell you, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of people saying, yeah, the rich need to pay the fair share. Well, okay, what is the fair share? Right now, you pay nothing. Yeah. So is that fair? <laughs> Well, the other thing about it, too, is that, uh, you know, the wealthy people in California, uh, besides being able to move out, um, they also uh, make other choices. And and the way that they they make their money is is oftentimes very different from the way that you and I make our money. Hang on a second. We want to invite callers to call in on the show. Um, If you call 909-888-5222, that's 909-888-5222. Or one eight 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 nine zero nine ten fifty. That's one eight 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 nine zero nine ten fifty. Then you can jump in the conversation, and and we we'll, we welcome your point of view. So go ahead, Topin, continue. Well, basically, what I was was trying to say is that they uh, get their money from the stock market. Um, that's a big source of, of income for wealthy people. And you the mean stock, like Facebook? Yeah, and the stock market <laughs> goes up, and the stock market goes down. And so what have we seen in California? The more reliant we've become on wealthy people for our state's tax base, the more volatile the state revenue has become. And that's why we see all these booms and busts in California. Uh, in fact, this current year's budget was based on uh, billions of dollars they thought that were going to come in from the the wealthiest people, uh, particularly from the Facebook IPO. Which didn't, it was, it, it fizzled. It fizzled. And so already the state budget is even more out of whack because they based their budget on one stock doing well and, and the wealthy people that well, work Well, come on, that Facebook. makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> it is it's crazy. crazy. Well, okay, but let's let's back up. I mean, because our Democratic counterparts would say, yeah, Prop 13 created that beast. Yeah. And what would your answer be? Well, I think that uh, to a certain degree, we need to go and, and look at Prop 13. Um, okay, that's that's Republican blasphemy. No, I know. I know. But here's the thing. The system, the current system that we have in the state of California is not working. And I believe that if we're going to fix California, 
everything's got to be on the table. And so we've got to completely sort of revamp the whole tax structure. Uh, we have to look at property taxes, sales taxes, uh, uh, even the fees. You know, we had a big thing when Schwarzenegger came in about the, the car renewal fee. And we just renewed my truck the other day. And, you know, it was expensive. It was expensive. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, but I think we have to have an honest conversation about how California raises the money that it needs to pay for the services that we want. Um, now, the problem is, is there's such a lack of trust uh, on both sides on both of the sides, aisle. both sides, yeah. And, and the general public, not only do they not trust the, 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 the two political parties, but they don't trust the media to give them the right information. And, and it's that lack of trust that is also, I think, undermining the, just the very stability of the system. So let's go back to this particular proposition. And, um, you know, you say that it's not going to make any difference. Do we pass it? Do we not pass it? I mean, I honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, I obviously I want money for schools because our, that's what the state government should be doing instead of some of this other nonsense that it does. I agree. And um, I'm, I'm on the fence as well. But I'll tell you the thing that's going to make up my mind for me. Uh, the governor last year promised to push pension reform. And what pension reform really does is it, it's a way of saying that we're serious about fixing the structural problems with the state deficit, that they're going to uh, reduce how much money is being spent on pensions and uh, change the, the balance of that equation. If the state takes action and does the 12-point plan the governor put forward, I would definitely vote for this tax in a heartbeat because it shows me that they're now serious about not just raising revenue for our schools, but also fixing the long-term structural problems in the state deficit. But if, if the pension reform doesn't happen, then I'm kind of leaning towards a no vote because I don't want to give them more money if they're not willing to, t to make the other hard choice, which is to fix their spending problem. Right. So let's see. This, this um, according to the the... Prep the proposition, not preposition, proposition, different thing. Proposition uh, uh, sheet filed in, at the Attorney General's office. So temporary taxes to fund education, guaranteed local public safety funding. And this is initiative. This is a constitutional amendment. It increases personal income tax on earnings over 250000 for seven years. Yeah, seven years, my eye. Increase sales and, u sales and use tax by one quarter cent for four years. Allows temporary tax revenues, 89% um, of to go to K through 12 schools and 11% to community colleges. Now, it's important to say we already have a ballot measure that requires that a certain amount of funding go to public schools, but they're not honoring that right now. They're they're not op uh, they're not honoring uh, Proposition 98, which uh, many years ago set the the floor uh, for funding for schools. And what happens with Prop 98? If you look back at what happens when they underfund Prop 98 eventually some future governor is going to have to make them whole again. And if you remember when Gray Davis was governor and the state had money all of a sudden uh, at the beginning of his term because of the, the, the tech boom, the tech boom um, that's when schools got this massive influx of new money to make them whole from previous years when they had not funded Prop 98. And so uh, we, I worry about that future when it comes that suddenly when they have to pay back the schools again and what that's going to do to of keeping our budget balanced because it's are they it's just gonna, gonna if this passes they're just gonna wave Prop ninety eight I, I goodbye don't know. I don't know I, I, I Prop ninety eight still in place if this tax measure passes as far as I understand um, but again it it doesn't solve the long term problems right it's a, it's a short term measure that brings in some money today and and I, I would also disagree with their uh, percentages here it says eighty nine percent goes to K through twelve and eleven percent to community colleges. The, the, re the reality is is that the taxes that are coming in, a large chunk of those taxes is going to go to cover the state's issues, the state deficit. A large chunk of it's going to go to pay for something called realignment, which is where they're sending the prisoners that were in our state prisons back down to our county jails. Yeah, we've seen a spike in crime, a significant spike yeah. in crime because of that. And so, you know, the governor wants to sell this by talking about schools because that's what people love is their schools, and they're willing to vote to protect their schools. But the reality is a large, large... Uh, amount of this money, about 50% to 60% of it, is going to go to other stuff. Only 40% is required under Prop 98 to go to schools. 
So this one, it says it bars the use of funds for administrative costs, but provides local school governing boards discretion to, su- to decide in open meetings and subject to an annual audit how funds are to be spent. <laughs> it also guarantees funding for public safety services realigned from state to local governments. And that's that realignment that you're talking about. Yeah, but you don't know, notice that's the last bullet point on there. They don't put a percentage on that to say how much money is actually going to realignment. I guarantee you that it's a very, very large percentage. Um, and so... You know that's the that's the unspoken part. That's the the part that they don't want you to know about because people don't really want to spend money on that. The, you know they they're happy to spend money if it goes to schools, and so they're being t- sold it's going to go eighty nine percent. Well, that's eighty nine percent of the forty percent that's going to go to schools. Not and the other sixty percent. Uh, well, to, isn't that misleading? It is. It is. And and that's that's what your average voter isn't going to understand because they don't know about Prop ninety eight. They don't know how the funding for schools works. They just know that their schools are failing. They do. They do. And, you know, the other part about the uh, local school boards deciding how this money is going to be spent, um, I have a real problem with that because I'll tell you, I was a local school board member for one term on the Colton School Board, and our state has created so many uh, laws that tie the hands of the local school boards that the school boards making decisions are only making decisions on the fringe about what, what's happening in their schools. The, the state decides what textbooks you're going to use. The state puts all these mandates in about uh, uh, what you have to have in the classroom and how you teach and what you teach. And, and so the school boards, they, they don't really have these wide range of discretionary spending like you would think. Um, it's not real local control anymore. No, that's – it. That. I don't know what else to say. I'm so frustrated. I do want, we send money up to Sacramento because we want it to be used to improve our situation here in the yeah. state. And we do, I, I have no problem with having a safety net, but it, it, it's on a national level and on a state level, our safety net is is overburdened. Yeah. And so, you know, we need to rethink what we're doing. And, and people will say, what about corporate welfare? Everything should be on the table. Yep. Yeah. Everything should be on the table. Well, there's another tax measure as well that's Prop 38, and we'll need to talk about that. Yeah, one. I think we're not going to get to the local issues today. When we come back, we'll talk about more about the propositions because yeah. um, there's so many of them on the on the ballot. So you've been listening to live with Aaron and Tobin on KCAA AM two, 1050. Two sides with Aaron. And oh, Tobin. did I? It's live with Aaron and Kelly. See, I just plugged Aaron Aaron and Kelly's show again. So li- two sides with Tobin and Aaron. <laughs> Aaron and Tobin. <laughs> <laughs> For three years, you've heard Aaron Brinker on...